Hi, everyone. We're very excited to talk to you today about our work. Attention is not all you need. Pure attention loses rank doubly exponentially with steps. This is joint work with Jean-Baptiste Cordonia of EPFL and Andreas Lucas, also of EPFL. Attention-based networks have been widely adapted across many machine learning domains, such as in natural language processing, computer vision, speech recognition, and many others. Yet, our understanding on why attention models work remains limited. In this work, we seek to better understand what makes self-attention networks effective. Here are some key takeaways from our work. Pure self-attention networks have an inductive bias where all tokens become uniform and the rank of the model output becomes one, i.e. the rank collapses. Our analysis indicates that skip connections play a key role in mitigating this rank collapse and MLPs can slow down this convergence by increasing their Lipschitz constant. Our results review a previously unknown vital utility of skip connections beyond facilitating optimization and gradient flow. We also develop a network decomposition in the process. Let's start with a quick overview of the attention mechanism. Given two input sequences, here labeled as from and to, the goal is to write the from sequence representation as a linear combination of the two sequence representation. To do this, we create a query embedding using the from sequence and key and value embeddings using the to sequence. We then take the pairwise dot product between the query and the key embeddings to compute the attention coefficients which precisely tell us which linear combination of the value embeddings to take to represent the from sequence. In this work, we focus on commonly used self-attention architecture, where the from and to sequences are the same. Know that conventionally, multiple attention heads are computed and concatenated together. To better understand the results, let's first take a detour on a useful tool for self-attention network that we developed in the process, the pass decomposition. Specifically, we decompose the self-attention network into a linear combination of weakly interdependent paths, where each pass corresponds to a deep single head self-attention network. Two paths are illustrated in this figure, a red path and a blue path. Intuitively, we can view the self-attention heads in each layer of the original network as different gateways. And the path follows a sequence of gateway choices, one gateway per layer. A path is uniquely determined by the attention heads chosen on that path. Such a path decomposition is useful as it modularizes and can often simplify the analysis for multi-layered self-attention models. For instance, we first derive our results on a single pass, then generalize to a combination of paths. So how does the rank collapse phenomenon manifest? Here's an informal theorem statement. A pure self-attention network, i.e. without skip connections or MLPs, converges to rank one doubly exponentially quickly with respect to network depths. Let's take note of the doubly exponential rate of convergence here. For instance, to go from a thousand to one, an exponential convergence will likely take say 10 iterations, whereas a doubly exponential convergence will take just a few iterations, i.e. a few layers. We prove this by showing that the residual or the projection away from a rank one component converges to zero doubly exponentially quickly. But just why should self-attention converge? While our actual proofs are much more nuanced, here's some simplified intuition. The output of the self-max normalization in attention is a slow stochastic matrix. 
the past decomposition shows that the self-attention output is involving a product of such stochastic matrices. A product of stochastic matrices has been shown to generically converge to rank one. Note that the simplified view would only yield exponential convergence rather than doubly exponential. The convergence results lead to a natural question. Then why are self-attention networks still so effective? In practice, we know that they don't suffer from rank collapse. Indeed, our analysis shows how different mechanisms, namely skip connections and MLPs, counteract this convergence. Indeed, in the presence of skip connections, the path links distribution is much more diverse. There are many more paths of short links, less than the depths of the network. In practice, there is at least one pass of length zero. So the rank of the output is at least as large as the rank of the input. This also shows a previously unknown benefit of skip connections, apart from their benefits facilitating network optimization. Another mechanism that counters rank collapse is the MLP as nonlinearities often increase the rank of their input. We found that this counteracting effect depends polynomially on the MLP Lipschitz constant. But note that larger Lipschitz constants tend to decrease model robustness. Hence, adjusting the Lipschitz constant will lead to a trade-off between maintaining rank and model robustness. We also analyzed layer normalization and found that to not have an effect on the rank, as it can be reparametrized as a shift and a scaling. We conduct various experiments to test our hypothesis and analysis. Here, we examine the residual in pre-trained versions of three well-known transformer architectures, BERT, Albert, and ExxonNet. Experiments confirm that, as seen in the graded stride stri line, as soon as the skip connections are removed, all networks exhibit a rapid rank collapse. Note that the models here are pre-trained with skip connections, as training without skip connections would be invisible in deep networks due to known gradient vanishing issues. Furthermore, we test path effectiveness of individual paths through a path disentanglement procedure, which can separately measure the effectiveness of paths of varying lengths. We do so for three different tasks, random entity label memorization natural language, where the model learns to memorize randomly assigned entity labels on tokens. Two, learning to sort sequences of letters. And lastly, convex hull prediction, where the model learns to predict the convex hull of a set of points on the plane. We measure the effectiveness of a set of paths using the accuracy of predictions by those paths. As shown here, effectiveness declines significantly with respect to path lengths, as predicted by theory. And a few paths of short links are already quite effective. This implies that the self-attention networks behave like an ensemble of shallow networks. In another experiment, we further test the inductive bias of different components of the transformer architecture. Specifically, we train a single layer transformer to sequentially predict the trajectories of two circular arcs in R2, where the model is applied recurrently to predict successive points. As seen here, an input sample consists of a sequence of two opposing points on the circle, one from the top arc and another from the bottom arc. Convergence of the two arcs implies rank collapse, as that means the two points in the predicted sequence have become the same. 
Let's look at the results. Here, the first plot shows that the two trajectories indeed converge in the absence of skip connections and MLPs, indicating right collapse in the pure self-attention network, confirming the theory of prediction. Even more interestingly, these bottom two plots show that adding either MLP or skip connections is able to stop or drastically slow down red collapse. Furthermore, the theory predicts that a larger hidden dimension slows down red collapse, which is confirmed experimentally on the top row in the right two panels. Note that the effects of adding MLP and skip connections persist in these cases. In summary, our work exposes competing forces over rank collapse in self-attention networks, namely self-attention versus skip connections and MLPs. In the process, we develop a path decomposition for self-attention networks, which modularizes the study of self-attention and is of independent interest to additional applications. It also opens a door to a myriad of exciting future directions. For instance, how can one leverage the token uniformity inductive bias reviewed to design more effective networks, perhaps better at utilizing long paths? What are some practical implications for with depth trade-off? What are the implications on efficient transformers? How do we prove meaningful lower bounds of the residual convergence for transformers? We believe that answering these questions will have broad implications in advancing the state of the art. Our code is publicly available online. Please let us know if you have any questions or ideas for collaboration. Thank you.